Hello, and uh, welcome to the Studio Utani podcast, where uh, we ask the question, what's the story, mother? Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Baker. I'm Justin. And uh, we got some uh, topics this week that we are going to talk about. <laughs> um, so uh, the, uh, the first thing that we kind of want to do is... Um, you know, we uh, we had a comment on last week's video uh, from somebody whose name uh, I am unable to pronounce because I uh, do not uh, read a Japanese unless your name is Godzilla, and, and but uh, yeah, uh, well, it's not uh, oh, because right. I, because I because I can read it if it was Godzilla, right, right. Uh, but but um, uh, this person uh, says uh, fire team. Uh, you know, we were talking about that some last week. Fire team is constructed with care and attention. It's just a hollow experience because it's a shooter. It offers nothing. I do super appreciate all of the design that was put in. And uh, mm -hmm. the, this person does make a good point. And I, we probably mentioned it, but just to kind of be clear, Aliens Fire Team is clearly crafted with love uh, for the Alien franchise. It's not just a you know, let's, you know, do a tribute to James Cameron's movie. It's, it's pulling from everywhere. And, you know, to contrast it, like Aliens Colonial Marines, which came out like 10 years ago or so at this point, um, was pretty cynical and kind of a cash grab where um, this one, you know, does feel like there was some love uh, put into it. But you know kind of confirming our point it it doesn't really it, it's not necessarily a very exciting game though even though you know the people behind it might very well be passionate about what they were doing um and yeah i kind of think that the big one of the big issues with fire with aliens fire team elite is that it draws more from the lore than the experience of watching an alien movie mm. You know, right, because not there's less tension. You're killing the aliens really quick. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's that's the problem. It's 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 easy to kind of reference the lore, um, but it's a difficult. It's a more difficult thing to actually kind of cra craft the experience that you expect from that lore. Um, sure. Yeah. So the uh, the next thing that is on our list to talk about is, of course. The Dune sequel has been greenlit, as expected. Oh, let's go. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As we uh, as we talked about last week, um, I was fully expecting this to happen. Um, yeah, it was all but like officially confirmed. Yeah, yeah, because, like we said, I don't think this movie is necessarily going to be beneficial to Warner Brothers or Legendary just had this half a story. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was all but confirmed that this would happen. And what's really exciting, uh, the sequel is expected to come out on, uh, I believe they said, uh, you know, the, uh, I can't remember, it was October or December of 2023. Oh. So, so, uh, so Denis Villeneuve has previously discussed that as soon as it gets green lit, he's ready to go he's ready to jump right into it and uh it seems that's definitely the case they're they're gonna just jump right in and get this thing out as soon as they possibly can mm -hmm. this Which, film all of next year yeah well i mean that would be the concern right if if too many years go by people almost might forget about it uh, and, and you know that sounds that sounds bad but it, it's a tricky property with dune because it's one of those things where it's like it's classic sci-fi it's obviously heavily influential and, and renowned but it's also like a 60 year old book and yeah you know because of that there's like you know there is something of a lack of a connection between you know a modern audience and an audience of yesteryear uh, mm -hmm. that they would risk losing if they didn't keep up interest in the property but that also might be what the the point of the tv series like the dune sisterhood show they're doing is just to kind of you know right. keep, keep people I in that know. yeah keep them in the world for the couple of years that it's going to take for them to get part two out and have they discussed uh children of dune um oh, the not, other series 
Um, well, they well they haven't talked about Children of Doom. What they've talked about is like uh, Denis Villeneuve says he would like to do like a trilogy where it's you know the first two parts uh, are, are of the first book and then the third movie is going to be an adaptation of dune messiah which is the okay. second book uh children of dune is the third book but um they, that, they haven't that hasn't been brought, that hasn't been brought up okay um and i'm not even too familiar with that one it's really the first i'm not even really that familiar with doom messiah i'm it's really yeah. the first book that uh that i'm the uh, diehard fans say the first four kind of core from what i've been reading like uh, up through god emperor of doom mm -hmm. yeah and then uh after that i think his son took over and then there's some more mixed feelings i think, I think herbert did have two more books but yeah, so they aren't really quite as core yeah. Chapel books. I've heard things about. It's contentious. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, uh, I've heard some interesting things uh, about uh, about what happens, and uh, yeah, I, I almost, yeah, I, I think I'm not sure how much I should actually say, but there, there's some things that happen uh, later it's on. God Emperor of Dune is where the thing that you're thinking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, happens. yeah. We, we talked about it. Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, there right. is a scene in. Uh, the dune movie that foreshadows that and it's not exactly what you think it is okay all right well you could um, take what you in particular think it is it's not yeah, quite. yeah yeah um yeah i'm i'm kind of debating because i because on one hand they uh this is like a really old book series and on the other hand there's plenty of people like me that are interested in this world that really didn't necessarily read the books but kind of you know, learned more about it through osmosis and, you know, you know, seeing like the Lynch version and the Villeneuve version. And, you know, it was almost like a part of me. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil myself in a weird way. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I've kind of stayed away from it as well. Yeah. I'm but uh, but uh, I'm sure the true fans that are, that are watching know kind of, probably have an idea of what, uh, what we're referencing here. But of course, anywho, we're at least going to get the second half of um of dune and uh that is uh fantastic news. yeah fantastic yeah. news i uh, cannot wait for uh that to happen our next uh topic is uh the reviews uh, for marvel's new movie the eternals are in and um the early reviews for it really are not too terribly flattering um so currently I'm pulling up an article from Variety and it says that Eternals is currently the lowest rated film in the MCU. And uh, let's see, is there any numbers here? Um, yeah, oh, shoot. It's 59% uh, positive reviews, which that would actually make it Marvel's uh, first uh, rotten rating. Really? Uh, Their first one? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, Thor two, surely. Well, I'm not sure what Thor two is. Right, I, I did not like Thor two, but I mean Thor two was got you know above sixty percent, which is that's the threshold. Um, wow. But um, but yeah, I I mean I was kind of excited about this one because it's been it was written and directed by Chloe Zhao, who of course uh, just won the academy award for best director and best picture for nomadland uh, last year which was excellent me and justin went to go see that and um i you know thought it was a pretty poignant film uh and it was exciting that she was going to be doing a marvel movie um but i guess kind of the question with this is 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 the movie not being well received do you think because it's too off brand for for marvel because it does look a little bit different some of their other movies or is it just really just not a good match between you know you know director and material uh i would guess it's a combination of the two i'm hoping it's more the lad the first one i'm hoping that it's more just that you know people aren't ready for a chloe zhao marvel movie you know yeah but um i could i could see it also being a, i could see there being a lot of uh clash between her style and the material that she's doing 
Yeah, from what I understand, people are saying that the uh, movie is um, incredibly convoluted um, and confusing, um, which, you know, I, I can see a situation arising where Chloe Zhao is trying to tell a story that she wants to tell, but she has to do it within the confines of an established cinematic universe where a bunch of other movies happened. And that seems to be kind of a thing. It, it kind of happened a little bit with like Edgar Wright in his Ant-Man, where Ant-Man was originally supposed to be something that happened much earlier in the MCU. It was going to be one of the first films after Iron Man. And it um, ended up getting delayed and delayed. And then it got to a point where when Edgar Wright was, you know, ready to do it, it was just kind of like, well, we can't make the same movie that you wanted to make because the universe is different now. Um, but even then, I still see like a lot of directors want to come in and just, they want to tell a unique story but they almost have to kind of do a lot of wiggle wiggling around uh, a little bit to get around some of the more established stuff and i can see something with the eternals being like this very uh, the the set of heroes that i'm honestly not that familiar with but my understanding about them is like they've they've kind of like cosmological beings that have just been around for a long time and you have to kind of justify well why didn't we see them in an x movie then or, or what have you um do you guys what, what are your guys' thoughts on that baker do you got anything yeah uh i'm glad you brought up ant-man and edgar wright because i do think marvel doesn't tend to give a lot of creative control to their directors um and also, yeah, with it being like this ensemble cast of characters we don't know, and it doesn't have like the levity of Guardians or something like that, where it's a new cast of characters. Um, it's probably like Justin said, a couple of things, but I would be surprised if it was solely on the shoulder of the director. So like, I, I, I can't imagine she had enough creative control to make it insanely different from the cookie cutter formula of Marvel. Well, that's kind of the interesting thing is because Marvel did, uh, like Marvel's, you know, tried to control their their universe, you know, for a long time. They want it to feel a certain way, but recently they've started to kind of open up a little bit more and give a little bit more freedom to directors. And I think they're okay with that because audiences around the world, for the most part, are kind of already on board with it. So they have a little bit of leeway to do more stuff like this um that's but, true they have like with wandavision that was pretty out there and then thor ragnarok obviously well like yeah, you got to do some stuff so i see what you're saying well, um yeah well thor ragnarok in particular is you know clearly uh, uh taika watiti you know really bringing his spin on things um you know and and i would even say to an extent even stuff like black panther um really kind of open things up a little bit more for people to you know tell different stories and of course that one is pretty easy because it takes place in Wakanda and Wakanda is like de facto like isolated from everything else that's happening so and it brought that in actually into question it's like how involved should you know Wakanda be with the outside world that was kind of the central like you know conflict of the movie whereas the Eternals um again i'm not too terribly familiar with them but it does seem a little bit like well you know why aren't these characters why haven't seen why haven't we seen these characters until now like where were they when thanos snapped away half the universe right is this a prequel i'm not sure honestly um okay. i it, it's you know it's hard to say i mean i'm I'm not super invested in in like the Marvel stuff. I probably with some with with some exceptions, I've probably only seen, you know, each film like one time. Um, th there's a there's uh, a yeah. there's a handful. Seen, yeah, like Infinity War, I've watched a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, Thor Ragnarok, I really like, but I, I know what you mean. I think the the cosmological space space stuff is where Marvel's at its best. But I like Spider Man too, you know. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting is like you brought up like Guardians earlier and, and Guardians was the first time we really got to 
step into this whole other side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that was kind of cool because James Gunn, you know, at least, you know, to some extent, you know, he has to kind of play with Kevin Feige's vision, but uh, he got to kind of work with him to define what that side of the universe looked like. Um, so that was kind of unique. Uh, but then the other movies had to follow um, that formula. But that almost kind of worked out because if you look at something like Thor Ragnarok, uh, Taika Waititi, Waititi took, you know, a lot of what James Gunn did with, you know, in defining kind of the cosmological side of the Marvel Universe and, you know, worked it into, you know, his movie about, you know, Norse gods and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool that they kind of figured a way to do it. It's kind of creative within the context of what Marvel is trying to do, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, and to merge Thor with the Guardians, right? Isn't that the plan? So it yeah. was a great bridge for that because they did like the, the classic rock music and Mm -hmm. uh, the the color scheme is very similar and stuff so yeah, yeah. it was it was that was good yeah i think thor is going to be in guardians 3 yeah which as uh, guardians of the galaxy uh you know if they didn't do it already start the uh you know the theme of like calling it volume 2 or volume 3 uh, that would actually be a really great alternate title what i'm saying man yeah, as guardians of the Ga galaxy i kind of love that um but but yeah i am i'm gonna kind of reserve judgment on eternals until i see it um i know justin is you know quasi interested in seeing it he justin's uh, justin's uh you know i'm you, a real you know. anti-marvel <laughs> yeah are there I'm any not a, not a fan of the universe at all but <laughs> are there any you like um there were a couple i liked i liked the first and the third Iron Man movies. Yeah. Okay. And I liked Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah. Right. That's like a, just a spy movie, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. that's why I liked. I thought you know a political thriller kind of thing. Yeah. And I I also uh, like Iron Man three and Winter Soldier quite a bit. Iron Man three is a little bit controversial with people, but I I love it. I think it's. I just think it's fun. I think it's yeah. probably the most fun Marvel movie that I've seen. Oh, it really is. I mean, that's Shane. That's Shane Black, right? Yeah, Shane Black did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one too. It, it just it was it was kind of cool on on multiple levels, but and I don't know, fans you know kind of wanted a different movie than yeah, what Shane Black was making. I'll probably see the Eternals just because they brought on Chloe Zhao. You know, this is the first time they brought on a Academy Award winning director. Mm -hmm. You know, and seeing what an academy award wing director does who's never i don't think she's ever worked closely with a studio before yeah. like this so to see you know how much the studio hinders her or how much it could help her is, yeah. would be a really interesting thing to see oh yeah i'm that's exactly why i'm interested in seeing it um and yeah like i said i'm gonna reserve judgment until it comes out um but um yeah it's it's kind of interesting that it's not as well received uh, as some of the others. Um, but do we have a, a release date on that? I think um, I think it's coming out November fourth. So uh, I think oh that's... right right it's about to come out. Okay. Yeah yeah. So is that isn't that like Thursday or Friday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of those. Uh, we'll probably see it and maybe we'll talk about it on the uh, on the next episode. Sure. Yeah yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so kind of scraping a little bit of the bottom of the barrel here. Uh, occasionally, I um, I will go to Google and I will type in the word science fiction and then click on news and see what comes up. And uh, something interesting kind of came up. Um, pulling back the, the curtain here, Matt, showing how the sausage is made. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes that's a little bit fun seeing, seeing how, how that gets done, um, but... Uh, uh, songwriter uh, Neil Young um, is uh, apparently written a sci-fi novel that's going to come out. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's coming out sometime next year, uh, and it sounds uh, absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm looking at the article here. Um, 
right. So it's, I love I love the way he describes it. I yeah, don't know yeah. If you're, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so I I found I was just looking forward in the in the article. Okay, it, it's centered around a, and an employee of a corrupt power company who gets exposed as a whistleblower. He discovers the uh, solar company that he works for is a hoax, and they're not really using solar. You're, they're using this shit. The guy who's uh, doing the guy who's doing this has come up with a way to make bad fuel, the bad energy, this really ugly, terrible stuff, and he's figured out a way to genetically create these animals that shit that gives this energy to make the fuel. So he's created this new species, but the species escapes. So it's a fucking mess. It's a long story. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys can follow any of that. Um, but uh, my, my favorite thing about that is it's a long story at the end. That's <laughs> just another detail about the book. Like he <laughs> describes it and then he's like, it's a long story too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm intrigued um, by it. I, I don't know if, um, if it's something that I'm gonna, you know, devote time to reading, but uh, it, uh, I, I'm definitely kind of like, well, that sounds that sounds pretty bonkers, um, and I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch for the reaction to that. Might be worth reading. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Um, I just thought that was kind of funny because uh, you know you wouldn't expect that necessarily, like from a famous songwriter. I'm going to write uh, a science fiction novel that's maybe sort of anti green energy or something and then there's like a monster and the, i i don't know it just sounds just sounds a little bit crazy i thought that was interesting um yes it is yeah it's like an anti-green energy well, stance. i didn't think of that yeah it, well he's according to him it's like it's uh it's well it's solar power company but it's not actually solar power it's actually like they made a new animal that creates this energy and then it escapes and then bad stuff happens and it's a fucking mess and it's a long story like why wouldn't you just use solar power solar power works <laughs> why do you have to invent an animal yeah we have yeah. to yeah <laughs> i know it's it seems a little bit convoluted um right. but i don't know that could that could be kind of fun i don't know um but uh but yeah so hey, that, listen, i mean I, I'm all for these original IPs, you know, this could be the next uh, big thing, who knows? Yeah, you know, this is, this is what he's gonna, you know, th this is his post music career. It's like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out this, this weird monster sci-fi novel. Um, A book with no name. Although it's actually called Canary for some reason. Oh, that's an interesting title. But I do think a book with no name would be would be appropriate <laughs> yeah he's got a bank off i mean come on <laughs> yeah yeah right um but anyway that was an interesting story um so kind of the last uh well this isn't the last thing that we got but this is the kind of the last thing on my list i know baker you have a couple things you want to talk about but um um oh yeah so so recently um disney and pixar dropped uh the trailer for lightyear and uh we checked out that trailer and um uh, i have some thoughts about it <laughs> um I, I i think it's interesting because they it, it starts out um looking like they're that you know they're trying to make like a genuine like science fiction movie and and they are you know they're certainly kind of branding it that way but um then at the very end of the trailer it is revealed that uh in fact this is the story of the character of uh buzz lightyear that the toy buzz lightyear was inspired by and um yeah i i it it tries very hard to kind of rebrand that and when i but when i first saw the suit i was just kind of thrown off by it a little bit because I, I just immediately thought of the toy and it it's i that's just me personally um but uh, I don't know, did uh, Baker, I know you watched the trailer. Did you see it, Justin? No, I didn't. But I remember when I was a kid, there was a Buzz Lightyear TV show that was yeah. the science fiction, you know, the space story of the yeah. character Buzz yeah. Lightyear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's something that's interesting to me because the people who made the original Toy Story, like John Lasseter and the team, they, you know, came up with a pretty, like, you know there's there's some rich details there that kind of flesh out that world and make it feel a little bit more real and one of those things is 
you know, kind of deciding some things about the franchise of the characters, like, you know, and, and but the thing about that is in the original Toy Story, they they sort of use that uh, story-wise to sh uh, have, um, you know, the Buzz Lightyear action figure kind of realize that he's not actually that, and it's to contrast him with that. Um, I don't know if I was necessarily too terribly interested in what the actual thing was, but you're actually right. There, there was a, like, uh, I think there was a Buzz Lightyear star command on, on Disney or something. Um, yeah, there's precedent for it. And I think what I was saying to you about this, Matt, is I like that instead of going in the direction of Toy Story 5 and 6, we get these kind of supplementary side story movies that when you go back and watch the originals, now you have a little extra flavor and context. And yeah. it's smart to keep it animated, of course, because this live action I don't think would work at all. Yeah. Oh, or no. even 2D animated would be kind of weird. No, no, so, not at all. Yeah, so the, I like the character design. Um, it's Chris Evans. He's so cool. Yeah. So we're happy so, about that. So so that was actually kind of funny. I rem The first time I heard about this movie was um, I was watching the Disney Investors stream, which was the same stream where... Uh, they announced like they were doing the alien TV show and uh, Kevin Feige comes out to talk about this movie. And I'm like, why is Kevin Feige talking about this? Shouldn't it be like John Lasseter or Andrew Stanton or, or somebody? And then uh, he, he ends it, you know, saying, and of course, Buzz Lightyear will be voiced by none other than who else but Tim Allen. Then it says Chris Evans. And I'm like, oh, was it was I supposed to just know know that I, I mean I guess I understand why it's Kevin Feige now but it was just I it's just like I don't know I felt kind of like a bait and switch a little bit there <laughs> yeah for sure um, you didn't get Patrick Patrick Warburton would have been good too <laughs> well that would have been a joke that's the family <laughs> guy version um, right I think he did Buzz Light or like a different Buzz Lightyear toy in one of the movies or something like that oh I'm sure he's Patrick Warburton's a good voice actor, and he's definitely somebody that they would hire if Tim Allen was sick that day or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but no, I get the casting they, because they're trying to, as much as they, you know, they kind of want to do a callback, um, they do want to differentiate and say, hey, this isn't like the toy Buzz Lightyear that's voiced by Tim Allen. This is like the character that inspired that toy. Um, so I get wanting to kind of present it differently, and I, I do think it's an interesting thing to try and do it as science fiction, uh, uh, you know, like an actual science fiction action story, but I just, I kind of have to divorce it a little bit from Toy Story is, I guess, my, my thing with it. Um, you did. It'd be weird to watch and not think of the character we know already who's yeah. a toy. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing, and that, you know, that might be an easier, that's probably an easier leap to make for uh, most people, honestly. Uh, it's just kind of for me, I kind of tripped up on it, but. Um, I feel you there. Yeah, it's very confusing that they didn't go with Tim Allen because I always thought the toy was voiced by Tim Allen because he was the, you know, because yeah. that voice, that was the voice the character had in the TV show I, or whatever the property that the toy was based on. Yeah, that's well, what I always thought, but you know, but, well, I, I mean, it. yeah, I mean, I guess, like I said, I think they want to present it more as like we're trying to do like a serious like action sci-fi movie, um, and you probably, know, like, yeah, to help you distinguish between the two characters, like this is a different flavor, you know? right? I mean, because the, I mean, the original Toy Story is, you know, they, you know, the whole series, but especially like the first movie is like uh about uh you know an existential crisis and it's about identity and who you actually are and you know what you were designed to do and um i think maybe trying to separate it some from that and trying to make it like we're we're you know doing something else entirely you know i i can i can understand the the choice honestly but you you did mentioned earlier baker and i think it's a good point um if i don't know if there's any need to continue the St toy story franchise 
um especially after the third movie i, I didn't even see the fourth movie um but yeah, I, neither. I, I think if there is a need to continue it um i mean i, I guess this isn't you know the worst thing that they could do it, it's kind of interesting to, it's it, and it's a little bit different you know so and now they can do a woody movie and a Bo Peep movie and a Prospector movie. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's not give them any ideas. <laughs> they um, already come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. They there's already been endless CEO meetings about this, I'm sure. Um, but uh, but anywho, so uh, I don't know. Well, I forget when that's coming out, but uh, you know, I'll check it out. I mean, I the last pi- science fiction movie that Pixar did, Wally, is great. I mean, it's like one of the greatest. Like, I, I would consider Wall-E to be one of the greatest science fiction movies ever. Like, genuinely, um, it, the fact that it's animated. That's yeah, it, it's don't be put off by the fact that it's animated. It's it's. We just we we just need James Cameron to come in to the CEO meeting and write a dollar sign after Wall-E. Wally. Oh, there you go. There the much deserved so sequel. You know, I'm happy Wall-E hasn't gotten a sequel and. You know, I don't, I don't need a sequel to Wally. It's perfect. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, anywho, that's um, that's kind of what I have for news. But Baker, you said uh, there's a there's a couple of things that you're uh, that you pulled that you wanted to talk about. I don't have much. Um, but here, listen, if we're talking about Toy Story on the Alien podcast, I think the public is ready for Baker's Weeaboo Corner, where Uh-oh. I can discuss anime. Uh oh, Justin, you parked right up when I said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah, so that certainly gets certain parts of the fan base excited. <laughs> exactly. Come on, cast a wide net here. But um, we got a Cowboy Bebop uh, live action adaptation coming to Netflix this November, November nineteenth. Ten episodes, and um, I'm I'm hesitantly excited. I love Cowboy Bebop, but I feel like anime live adaptation live action adaptations don't have a great rep um this is sci-fi though so it's irrelevant to mention has there been a good anime live action adaptation in your opinion um i don't think so (laughs) i can't think of one i didn't see ghost in the shell but i doubt that would be it I, i i didn't see ghost in the shell either um it's actually one of the featured movies in uh the studio yutani uh intro uh, that I put together. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. The, Scar- uh, I'm, the Scarlett Johansson one, to be clear. Yeah, I love the yeah. But... yeah. I've 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 not seen either version. Um, but oh. yeah, and I've and I've not seen um, Cowboy Bebop. I'm. Oh. I'm, yeah, I'm not really a. I don't really watch a lot of te- television, and I don't really uh, watch too much uh, anime as as a consequence of that. Um, I've always heard people say Cowboy Bebop is the anime for people who don't like anime. Um, it'll get you into it. It's got an amazing soundtrack, like awesome jazz music. And it's a very contained series. It doesn't go for like s- tons of arcs and like 300 episodes. It's like, it's pretty short. Um, and it's like a classic. So I hope it's going to be handled with respect. Um, I don't really know much about the cast or obviously it's a show. So there's not like one director uh but you know (laughs) the the only the only thing that i remember and this was actually the first time i heard about it there was some controversy changed one of the characters outfits or something and a bunch of people got mad or something and then i remember seeing a video like comparing the two and i'm like i mean they're it's just kind of something you do the translation from cartoon to live action and i'm like i i mean I don't know. Oh, I don't... You're talking about this movie or this show? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, th- yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, it's like less revealing outfit. Yeah. It's kind of the same color scheme, but like yeah. it's an adaptation, dude. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, I, I mean, yeah, I don't really feel like it's, it's something to really get super upset about. Like, I mean, I don't know, get over it, I guess. Oh, complaints <laughs> but... regarding woke casting because it's a Korean American actor playing a japanese character like uh, well now 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 know. you done made it political <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm just uh, reading up on this i hadn't heard about it but yeah i i mean i don't know i mean that's part of the concern i think with a lot of 
stuff like that because a lot of anime is very popular in the west and then it's like you know trying to appeal to both markets and you know uh, you know tr the casting can be you know controversial at times but I, I feel like in general you know it's people are getting a lot people are a lot more mindful about like ethnicity and you know a character and an actor playing them and you know this is this is tangentially related to that what did you guys think of the mario casting <laughs> yes uh, we finally can talk about it yeah the the elephant in the room um <laughs> i'm not a fan of anyone in particular that you're like no I, I no i i i mean i mean yeah i guess it's you know we're talking about mario on the alien podcast sure why not um yeah i don't like i I don't remember anybody who's in that cast except for um I know Chris Pratt is is Mario and then um mm -hmm. J Jack Black is Bowser. That's kind of weird, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it at Jack all. Black is Bowser is one that I can accept. You think it's just more. his voice is so high pitched. It just seems a little like, he, can do, he can do like a he can do a monster voice. I can see it. Like a tenacious D kind of Yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think Anya Taylor Joy. I could see her doing well, but I think the casting of Mario and Luigi was. I think people got really chosen. I think people got really thrown off because it was uh, they show all the actors, but it's voice acting. Like it's not like these people are actually playing mm -hmm. the characters. Although I will say, it seems like a huge missed opportunity to not have Danny DeVito as Mario opposite Luigi Charlie Day. You know, always see, any, super, anybody super who we know can do a good Italian American kind of voice. Yeah, you, you got know? that always sunny connection. You know, yeah, Mario yeah, Sunshine. I would actually totally love Danny DeVito and Charlie Day as as Mario. I don't, just do that. Like, don't even make it animated. Just put them right. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just put them in the costumes and then have them go squash mushrooms. You know, it's it's great. I, I love I love that, but it's illumination entertainment um yeah doing this, and they're famous for just completely selling out and just like you know we got this name and that name and they want people to see the pictures of who they cast because it's um you know it, it's it's like that's part of the uh the the selling point of it um i, I get it it's just like it, didn't I they know. do the emoji movie as well that no that was sony <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. no, yeah. but what has illumination done um the angry Despicable birds Me, movie minions no wait no angry birds i think was sony too. i'm not sure um, they did minions they did sing yeah. um, uh the grinch with ben benedict oh, yeah. cumber snatch um, <laughs> ex benedict cabbage patch yeah they're yeah. doing um the new shrek as well i, I <laughs> Since we're going completely fucking, off the rails, fucking Shrek, man. Um, I I love that Shrek like started as like a, a fuck you to Disney, and then it just now it's like a meme. Yeah, it became yeah. the worst of Disney. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, really seriously. You know, uh, to bring it back to Alien, there is an Alien reference in Shrek too. When uh, Puss and Boost bursts out of uh, Shrek's shirt when they're fighting, uh, yeah, it's like the the chest burster, yeah, yeah. You know, I the thing about like Shrek two, everybody said that Shrek two was better than the first one. I don't actually agree with that. I didn't like Shrek two very much. I couldn't tell you a thing that happened in Shrek two. I know I saw it a bunch when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like Shrek two. <laughs> yeah, I I think the first one's really solid, and then everything after, and and honestly. I, I saw a little bit of Shrek 3, and I definitely like Shrek 2 more than Shrek 3, but I, I think that first one's, you know, the only one that I really would consider, like, a classic. Shrek 3 is bad. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just not good. But now we're getting Shrek rebooted. Uh, Shrek rebooted. If they don't call it that, I'm going to be very disappointed. Right. I'm sure there's a pun we're not thinking of, but... Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. it's called Shrek rebooted. Um, okay. <laughs> but 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 talking about a, like the Cowboy Bebop thing, isn't there also a Blade Runner anime that's coming out like on Adult Swim? You know, yeah, you mentioned that, and I never looked into it. Yeah, I um, I, I, I as far as other sci-fi stuff this November uh, that I have here, 
Uh, there's a, for some reason they listed Wheel of Time, which seems more fantasy to me, but uh, you know maybe. What, what, I'm not familiar with Wheel of Time. It's a it's a long-standing book series, but I always thought it was like high fantasy. Uh, but I haven't it read it. It sounds familiar. Wasn't there a movie like like that? It had like Oprah Winfrey in it. it came out like a few oh, years ago. <laughs> you're talking about um. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's not that. Yeah, I I don't remember. You're, never... you're talking about the Ava DuVernay. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. I don't remember. What it was called. Oh, Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. yeah. No, okay, it's okay. not 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 that one. Okay. <laughs> it's like kind of Lord of the Rings, uh, good versus evil kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. From I mean, my I'd... understanding. But... Yeah. I don't know, but uh, um, but yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not too familiar with that, but I am kind of familiar with Cowboy Bebop as far as like I, like I know the name like and I know it's like sci-fi but I never actually like it's good it. you should you should check it out maybe I will maybe maybe Baker the recommends one. Baker recommends it well there you go folks well since we totally went completely off the rails this, this episode <laughs> um, I like this episode <laughs> no no actually I, I I don't completely hate this episode either um but uh you know this is fun uh but uh anyway uh that's I think that's uh pretty much everything uh this week um so uh yeah thank you all for watching um if you liked uh this episode if you liked our conversation give us a like um you know drop a comment for us maybe we'll talk about it uh, on the next episode next week and let us know if you want us to talk about eternals because you know yeah. we might but if you guys don't care then we could I, probably skip it right <laughs> I, I, I mean I, I i'm curious to see it so i mean i'm probably gonna see it when it comes out um okay so i mean we'll probably end up talking about it on the show um Disregard that then we're, we're talking we're, about yeah it. whether you guys like it or not you're getting it um but uh um but yeah, so I, I think this is uh, I think we're wrapping up here. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is uh, this is Matt Baker and Justin, the last survivors of the Studio Utani podcast. Signing off.